Hello everyone. Today in this video, we are going to understand that what an interface is and why they are so important in system value for design verification. But before going to understand what, what interfaces are, it is important to understand that why interfaces are required. To understand this, we will see a traditional approach of connecting the modules. For that, we will take an example of these two modules called uh, module processor and module memory. In this module, as you can see, we are declaring the port for both the modules. And uh, some bunch of bunch of logics also are inside, uh, logic also uh, defined inside these modules. So now, if I want to connect these two modules to a top module, then you can see here, we are de declaring the signals of the top module. Then we are instantiating these two module to our top module uh, using man and then uh, some name and then we, we are using dot name connection to instantiate the memory and processor to our top module so as you can see here that uh, there is some kind of an issue just to make and the issue is this just to make a single connection between two modules top and uh, one processor or core processor or mam you have to add the port to each of the modules first then you have to declare a nat or a variable in the parent module as you are doing here then you have to map the nat or a variable to the port of each of the module instance as you are doing here suppose take an example that uh, here the case is that both these clock both these uh, name of this signal clock in top and uh, the instantiated module are same but if these name is not same and it's different then you have to use a name connection that will make it really tedious and uh, this it, it can lead to a lot of error also now what happened that uh, in actual industry practice you are having a lot of signals that are connecting to multiple modules inside your design then creating the creating and maintaining such a, such a large number of bus connection can be very difficult in a Verilog. So what system Verilog provides you, system Verilog pro supports interfaces. These interfaces in the simplest form, if I'll explain, an interface is basically something which is uh, separately declaring, declaring these uh, named group of signals in a separate file. And all those connections associated with a specific interface are declared and maintained in one particular place that we will see in the further slide that how we are going to declare. But now as you can, now, now I think you have understood that uh, what is the issue of uh, doing uh, these kind of things when your design is communicating multiple places, when your same ports are communicating to multiple uh, modules in multiple places. Obviously, declaration of the bus port and the signal is time consuming and its error port. This is the main reason for that. Now we will see that what are interfaces. So basically, interfaces are the collection of signal or port that can be used to communicate different uh, modules. Or I can just say, an interface is a new kind of a design block that capture intermodule communication in one place. So as you can see here, these are the two uh, diagram that I want to want you to uh, see, which distinguish between the uh, traditional approach and the new approach. In the traditional approach, we are uh, defining all the signals in uh, module in memory and core modules, and then we are doing this connection. But an interface, you can just define it as a bundle and then uh, define all those signals in, uh, in some memory, in, in some module, in some different place. I'll just say not module. And then uh, use that uh, interface to connect uh, these two memory and module as a, as a uh, bundle. So I can just say, rather than declaring many ports and signal in each hierarchy level and connect uh, them as you were as we were doing here you can just uh, declare the signals in one interface and declare port of an interface type which when connected to an interface automatically make all the individual connection to you as we are doing here so 
some advantages of using this approach is that will make our design more modular it will reduce redundancy as like multiple modules that multiple ports or uh, singles that we are defining here in the traditional approach that not that don't need to be uh, done here it's just simple one uh, uh, interface file is there where all the input ports and uh, variables are defined and then the mismatch uh, related to the port size and number of port cannot occur there may be a chances that uh, here you are defining some five bit signal and then here you are defining some four bit signal then the mismatch of the size can occur here but that not the case that that is not the case here because you are defining this uh, all those things at a one particular place and then using that uh, using that interface to connect between the memory and the core now some advantages of using uh, interface some uh, some uh, features of interface are that it can include in the in the particular file it can include net and variable declaration port declaration task and function procedural block and assertions so that's the advantage of using interface uh, in spite of using some other uh, thing uh, let's say struct in a struct all you have to all you can do is you can just define uh, these net and variable declaration only but uh, in interface, you can define a task function, procedural block, and a session also. Now we will see that how these interfaces are created. So in system variable, interface is declared as a design element like a module. It is usually placed in separate file and compiled separately by the simulator. As you can see here, that we are, we are uh, uh, creating this interface in a separate file, and all those ports and uh, ports net and variable that are defined uh, in the memory uh, module mam and module processors are now defined inside this interface this particular file is created separately and need to be compiled separately only so now this interface you can define this interface name uh, as a port type in the module declaration to create interface port and then these interface port are connected using interface instantiation. We will see it in the module top. So here in the example, as you can see, we are having this module uh, MAM and module, module processor and uh, some input logic called clock and reset. And then all those address, uh, all those logics uh, or uh, variable that uh, we were defining inside, inside MAM that you can instantiate using bus which is the name of the interface and then you can just give some time give give some port name for that here we are uh, for uh, model mem we are giving uh, if mem and for processor we are giving if cpu now to connect these uh, model mem and processor to our top you have to interface the inter you have to do the interface declaration first so as you can see here after de after uh, declaring the Logic after declaring these uh, clock and reset port that are defined here, we are uh, interfacing the we are, we are doing the interface declaration. So for that, you have to again in the same fashion, you had to uh, put the name of the particular interface and then you have to give the instantiation name. Here we are using intf. Then this intf you had to connect with it cpu port. So that you can do in the when, while you are doing while you are mapping the instantiate interface to the uh, module port so here you are you are instantiating the uh, memory instantiating the memory and cpu this clock and reset uh, you are doing uh, using dot name connection and then this these these are kind of a port for uh, module mem and module processor this uh, if mem and if cpu these port are now connected to this interface then to this uh, interface variable so this is how you can just simply avoid avoid uh, doing connection of all those uh, ports that are defined in the that are defined here in the in, in the interface uh, multiple time while uh, doing the instantiation one more important thing here to uh, one more important point that you need to note is that if uh, an interface inter interface can instantiate other interface also one more important point 
that you had that that you can uh, that you can see here is that that now if there is any change in the address bus then you don't have to do any changes in the module mam module processor or in the top only you had to do the changes in the interface bus and in that interface uh, whatever change you are doing it will directly reflect in the module mam processor and top one more important point that you had to know here is that here as you can see we are using dot name connection but you can use ordered connection named connection dot name connection or dot start connection to connect with your interface connect connect uh, your these memory modules to your interface so now we have understood that how we can connect the memory processor and uh, top using interface now the second question that arise here is here is that how we can access the signals of the interface from our uh, top module or inside the processor so in the next slide we are going to see that how we can access the interface signal so there are basically two way of doing it the first way for a module with the interface port use use hierarchical path to the signal in the interface port so now if i want to access the interface signal so i have to use this particular syntax first i have to define the port name interface port name and then the signal name which i want to access we'll see an example and with that we'll try to understand how we can access the interface signal so here in this example as you can see i'm defining interface bus and some bunch of logic and then at the end we i'm ending the interface then in the in the module memory i am uh, creating this port name called if mem of uh, bus interface type and always block as you can see here suppose the case is that i want to uh, if i want to access the interface in my interface signal called rf read then uh, i'll use this particular syntax to use to do it first i had to first i had to write the interface port name so the interface port name that i have defined in the module uh, mam is if mam so that i have to write then i'll use this dot uh, convention to access the particular signal name so the signal name that i want to access is read write that i took put here and then i can use it in this fashion one small syntax issue here is that if i if you want to use if and you want to check any condition then you have to put double equals to here so this is how you can access the interface signal in the module so now you will see a different or a second approach of accessing the interface signal so in the first approach we were using the port name to access the interface signal now in the second approach we will use the instance name to access the interface signal so here we are doing the instantiation of interface bus and the in, and the inst instance or the variable of that interface uh, the name that i am giving here is intf so if i want to again the same say, same example i'll take if i want to access this uh, read write signal of bus interface then how i can do it i can just directly use the same uh, uh, use this particular syntax interface instance name that i'm defining here then the signal name that i want to access so now as you have seen that i can access the interface signal using two way first where i was defining this interface as a port uh, as as a port type and second where i'm instantiating the signal and i'm using the instance uh, my instance name to access the particular signal and the syntax for doing this is this and this now we will see if there is any external signal then how we can define it in our module so suppose apart from the uh, bus signals that apart, apart from the signals that are defined in, the, in in our interface bus if there are some uh, external signal called uh, clock and reset uh, then how you can define it in your module instantiation so that we have seen in the previous slide also but just now just to understand it more clearly 
suppose uh, these these two modules memory and clock are getting some different clock then you can use this uh, named uh, uh, approach where you are define where you have already defined uh, the amp clock and s clock in your top module and then the clock that is defined in the mod defined in the module memory and module processor Le but now assume that the reset that is reset which is an external signal that is going to memory and cpu is common for both uh, memory and cpu then the other or important way or uh, or i'll just say or uh, a more uh, generic way of doing it is that we can just send this particular reset signal as a port to our interface so here you, you can see then when the external signal are input to a particular interface so as we have seen that this reset is common for both memory and uh, core or uh, memory or cpu so we can just give this in give this uh, reset signal as a port and uh, while instantiating this uh, particular uh, interface we can give this reset signal as a port to a particular interface so that way you can understand and you can appreciate that uh, we can we can we can just uh, declare port to a particular interface and that way it will be more generic to in spite of doing it uh, in this fashion we can just directly uh, give it in give it as a port to a particular interface while instantiating and then you can enter you can uh, instantiate the uh, two modules memory and cpu this is the updated diagram as you can see previously these reset signal were going independently but now this reset signal is going to the interface and this then this interface is taking care uh, of the connection of this reset signal to both core and memory